Good evening and welcome to this very special edition of Diggers and Dozers Live. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. Uh, before we give, begin, I want to let you know that we will be running a competition tonight, uh, but you have to stick around to the very end of the show to take part. So without further ado, let's get ready because the show is about to begin. Received industry wisdom would have you believe that the reign of the Baco loader is rapidly drawing to a close. Some have suggested that, like dinosaurs giving way to the rise of the mammals, the combined forces of mini excavators and telehandlers have stolen the Baco loader's crown, that this construction workhorse is about to be put out to pasture. But while the naysayers sound the death knell for the humble Baco, those in the know insist that the machine's race is far from over. In fact, as you're about to see, the Baco loader is not a machine of the industry's past. It's a machine of the industry's present and its future. But before we get to that, let's take a look back. And please make allowances for the fat guy presenting this. I was carrying some lockdown weight. So sit back and enjoy. This right here is a piece of history. It's not some artifact from a bygone era. It's a JCB Baco loader. More specifically, this is the 750,000th JCB backhoe loader. Laid nose to tail, 750,000 backhoe loaders would stretch more than 4 million kilometres. To put that into context, that line of backhoes would stretch around the world more than 100 times. Joseph Cyril Bamford and his team built the first JCB backhoe loader in 1953. It's interesting to note that the machine was conceived in the same year that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II was crowned and the reign of both continues to this day. It's impossible to overstate the importance of the JCB backhoe loader. It's a machine that sparked a mini industrial revolution, mechanising jobs that had previously been done by hand. The backhoe loader would become the mainstay of construction sites around the world for more than half a century. The machine has had songs written about it, and the term JCB has slipped into the global lexicon. It's become shorthand for all types of construction equipment. Say those three simple letters to someone with no connection to the construction industry, and this is the machine they will picture in their minds. The JCB backhoe loader has evolved, of course. The original Mark I machine and the Hydra digger that followed just three years later came in a blue and red livery. It was only in 1960, with the launch of the heavier, more powerful JCB-4, that JCB's signature yellow branding made its first appearance. The JCB-3 went into production in 1961, followed by the JCB-3C in 1963, and the JCB-3C-2 in 1967, a model that stood the test of time, staying in production for the next 13 years. 1980 marked another turning point. A £24 million investment spawned the JCB3CX, a machine that has become a backhoe icon around the world. JCB now manufactures backhoe loaders here in the UK, in India, Brazil and also in the United States. In the field of construction, the backhoe loader is as important as the development of the printing press, the telephone and the personal computer. It made a multitude of construction tasks easier faster and less labour intensive and significantly safer. The fact that a single manufacturer has now produced more than three quarters of a million of these machines speaks to the ongoing significance of the backhoe loader. When that first machine rolled out of a shed in Staffordshire almost seven decades ago, nobody could have predicted it would change the construction industry forever. No one could have foreseen that it would become the foundation upon which a three billion pound global company would be built. No one could have imagined that the company would go on to produce 750,000 of the machines first conceived in the year man first conquered Everest. Or maybe one man did. Maybe Joe Bamford did. That is what visionaries do. And it's fitting that these machines still bear his initials to this day. Three quarters of a million backhoe loaders. JCB celebrated this remarkable milestone with a special, um, a special edition 3CX that acknowledges the, its British origins and its heritage, but it also gives a nod to the future. 
Um, the special edition machine features a stage five compliant engine that delivers 10% more torque and a 7% reduction in fuel consumption. The machine is operated from a state of the art Command Plus cab. I've sat in it and trust me, it is a fantastic work environment. The special edition machine is backed by JCB LiveLink Telematics, as all JCB machines are these days. And I personally believe that this is the one machine where JCB's operator app really comes into its own. The Baco loader was and remains the ultimate owner operator machine. And placing all that data in the operator's hands using a mobile phone, frankly, is a game changer as far as I'm concerned. We'll be back after this. You might think that a JCB digger and an iPad have very little in common. You'd be wrong. Check out why JCB is the apple of the digger world by Mark Anthony, exclusive to Amazon. When that first JCB backhoe loader rolled off the production line back at the beginning of the 1950s, I'm sure that many in the construction sector feared for their jobs. This was, after all, the machine that helped mechanise construction, allowing one man and a machine to accomplish in days what would have taken dozens of men weeks. History suggests that the opposite was true, though. The backhoe loader brought construction mechanisation to the masses, and it provided a cost-effective entry point for construction equipment professionals. In fact, many of the best known regional plant hirers started their business as an owner operator. And for many, the JCB 3CX was their weapon of choice. Those owner, oper owner operators would go on to own multi-machine fleets, but it was the backhoe loader that was the gateway drug that first triggered, triggered their construction addiction. That continues today, with aggressive machine financing deals set to give owner-operators a start, an opportunity to be their own boss. Having sat in the very latest JCB machine, I can tell you that their office is far more comfortable and far better equipped than mine. And there's more. I've reported on a, an industry-wide skill shortage for more than 30 years now, and it still shows no sign of going, going away anytime soon. In addition to making machines that feel familiar to the PlayStation generation, the leading backhoe loader manufacturers have also worked to widen the potential employment net, making the industry accessible to those that have been previously overlooked or sidelined. Check out this machine that's been modified to allow it to be operated by a wheelchair user. <laughs> There can be no question that the backhoe loader has come a long way. The machine of today would probably feel like something torn straight from the pages of a science fiction book to an operator from the 1950s, 60s, or possibly even 70s. And yet the basic machine of the design has changed very little over the last 70 odd years. Instead, the backhoe loader in general and the JCB backhoe in particular have been honed, refined, and perfected over almost seven decades. There's now a very real feeling that we've reached a point of peak backhoe. So where does the backhoe loader go from here? A lot of equipment innovation is driven by the need to comply with legislation. Diesel engines have already gone through stage three, stage four, and stage five evolution in recent, in recent years. That need for ever cleaner energy shows no sign of abating. We've seen JCB offering electric powered versions of some of its smaller machines, including mini excavators, and its recently introduced dumpster. You'd have to think that an electric backhoe lurks somewhere unseen on JCB's horizon. One thing is for sure, an electric backhoe most certainly lurks on the horizon for fellow backhoe loader manufacturer Case. At the Conexpo show in, er in Vegas earlier this year, the company unveiled the Project Juice. It's a prototype. I'm going to show it to you right now.
At Case, every concept machine that we put research and development resources towards is done with the intention of making a real impact on job sites around the world. We anchor these efforts in practical innovation, providing solutions that the contractor, the utility, or the municipality will actually benefit. That's the spirit that we brought to Project Zeus, or as we like to call it, the Case 580 EV backhoe loader, the industry's first fully electric backhoe loader. We leverage our knowledge of alternative propulsion technologies and worked with some of the biggest names in electrification to bring you a backhoe loader that provides the same power and performance as a diesel powered backhoe, but in a machine that produces zero emissions, almost eliminates operational noise on job sites for improved communication and job satisfaction, and will provide owners a significant return on investment over time based on the elimination of diesel, engine oil, deaf fluid labor, and other items related to long-term diesel engine maintenance. The backhoe loader as the machine platform is perfectly suited for electrification as the varied use cycles from heavy to light work provide an excellent opportunity to convert wasted diesel engine hours into zero consumption battery time. The Case 580 EV is equivalent to the power and performance of other diesel powered backhoes in the Case product line. Operators will experience the same digging, lifting, and craning performance achieved in a diesel-powered machine, but the electrified backhoe also offers a number of advantages over diesel-powered units. It provides the operator with instantaneous torque response when needed versus a diesel engine that requires time for the engine to ramp up to meet those load demands. This allows for consistent power and performance at all phases of operation. The machine's battery also separately powers the drivetrain and hydraulic motors resulting in hydraulic breakout forces equal to diesel powered machines and improved performance during simultaneous loader and drivetrain operation. We estimate that the 580 EV could save fleets as much as 90% in annual vehicle service and maintenance costs while taking into account the reduction or elimination of fuel, oils, and labor related to diesel engines. Some utilities and contractors are also incentivized to deploy electric equipment and vehicles in their fleets, providing even greater financial benefit and further lowering total cost of ownership. And while the electrified backhoe has a higher initial purchase price over the diesel powered equivalent, we anticipate payback within five years when you take all factors into account. Everything after that is pure savings, all while lowering the carbon footprint of your operation. So whether your goal is sustainability and reducing the carbon footprint of your operation, reducing emissions and noise on your job sites, or simply operating more efficiently with a machine that provides even greater consistency and power and performance, the industry's first fully electric backhoe will achieve these important benchmarks and more. For more information on the all new Case 580 EV and to reach out to Case to see how you can get behind the controls of the industry's first electrified backhoe, visit kce.com slash 580EV. Is electric power the future? Are we likely to see a hydrogen power model or a backhoe running on biofuel? I think only time will tell, but one thing is for certain. Talk of the backhoe loader's demise are greatly exaggerated. Now, I will get to the competition any second now, but we've had a whole heap of comments here. Good evening, Kenneth. Good to see you here. Duncan, you too. Brittany, I love it. I'm not sure what bit you loved, uh, Brittany, but thanks ever so much for joining us. And Peter Haddock is here, loving the move to electric, and also the colour is super cool. I'm sure the people at Case would be delighted to hear that. Now, I did mention a, a competition at the very beginning of the show, and I'm a man of my word. The eagle-eyed among you might have noticed that I swapped hats during the show. I hope you're paying attention. My question, therefore, is how many different hats did I wear during this, this evening's show? One person providing the correct answer will be chosen at random, and they will get this JCB hat, uh, complete with the, uh, the Union Jack. It won't be that one because I've worn that, but I've got a, a new one that's just like it. So that question again, how many hats did I wear during tonight's show? Just let us have your answer in the comment section below. And to allow you 
to anyone that joined late or those that are watching a replay to take part, we'll be holding the competition open until the next live show on Wednesday next week when I'm, I'm hoping my co-host, co-host Peter Haddock will actually be here. Until then, thanks for watching. Thanks for your participation. We had another notification there. Uh, Duncan, good to see you again, Duncan. Um, hydrogen is a definite mark, says Peter. Sean Gratton's just turned up. Um, everyone's dropping their answers. Not all of them are right. So uh, you may have to watch this on um, Catch Up as well. Um, until then, I hope you enjoyed the show. I look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon. We'll be back here on Diggers and Dozers on Wednesday next week. Same time, same place, 6.30, as I say, with my co-host, Peter Haddock. Um, If you want to see more of me, which I very much doubt, I'll be on Demolition News live tomorrow. Uh, Good evening, Nigel. Um, Thanks for your answer. not going to tell you whether it's right. We're going to save them all up. But until then...